Hey, I'm Talent. Hey, I'm Ty, and we're from His and Her Money in partnership with FICO. So we're going to be talking about the journey to home ownership. A Real lot of life you stories. all, you know, are there yes. or want to be there. And we do our best to try to educate you on all the things that you need to know to take dominion over your money and your life. And this episode is going to be no Oh my gosh. Different. I'm super excited about this episode. You all, when we put out a clearing call out <laughs> on social media, Anybody want to share their um, journey to home ownership? We received a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, lot. a lot of applications. Um, so thank you so much in advance. We may have to just continue this because you to. all seem to be very intrigued by it. So you could leave a comment below. Yeah. If let you us all know. love this to the point YouTube, that you yeah. think that we should keep this series going, let us know in the comments. That's right. Um, but I'm super excited because we have two great couples that are going to be coming on to share their story. And I love it because their stories are different. Mm -hmm. One's currently... Um, in their particular home. So they're going to be sharing the journey to um, buying their home. And one is currently in the thick of it. Yeah. Like they're building a new build yeah. and they're talking about the journey within it um, while they buy it. So super, super excited. Make sure that you guys take notes. Uh, make sure that you all listen carefully. We have some great, great information to share with you in this particular episode. A big part of the journey to home ownership is your FICO score. It's something that cannot be ignored. It's something that needs to be understood. And so you're going to hear that throughout this interview. We're going to be talking about things like what is your FICO score and why is it important and how do I understand it and what goes into it? That's You're right. going to learn all of that because we want to make sure that you put yourself in a position of strength. That's right. Super, super excited for you guys to check this episode out. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey, Stuart family. Hey, Robert's family. Hey. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey. hey. Thanks for having us. Yes. We are glad to have you guys because we're dealing with something here um, that a lot of people are dealing with. Yes. And that is the journey the home to home ownership. And I think that what I love about you all's stories is that you all went on the journey <laughs> But you all had some obstacles that you all had to overcome to get to the actual goal of becoming a homeowner. And we know that everybody listening is going to be able to take away from both of you all stories and apply the lessons that you've learned to their own story and maybe have a smoother yeah. path to home ownership. And that's the goal with today's episode. But some people are being introduced to you all for the very first time right here and right now. So we want you guys to introduce yourselves to the audience and let them know what you all are all about. So Murphy and Melissa, why don't you guys go first? Hey, hi everyone. I'm Melissa Stewart. I am Murphy Stewart. And um, we have, yeah, we, we are one couple that love to educate ourselves and to get to where we need to be and to build wealth and have a strong foundation that we can actually last generationally. So we are excited to be here, no doubt. <laughs> Awesome. awesome. Super excited to have you all. Evan and Leslie, why don't you let everybody know who you all are and what you guys are all about? I'm Leslie Roberts. And I am Evan Roberts. And together we are the uh, creators of the Kahari series, which is a children's picture book series. We are also educators. Uh, my wife has been educating, uh, man, 20 years, right? Has been. <laughs> And I've been in uh, in the classroom for over 15 years. So it's been a, a wonderful journey. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. So let's jump in. I want to ask this question to both of the couples. We'll ask the Roberts um, first. Um, why was becoming a homeowner important to you? Yeah, I would say the, the big part uh, for us was just, you know, we lived in an apartment and this was prior to having our son, Gavin. And, and so, you know, you, you have an apartment, you're sharing walls with other people. Uh, but eventually, you know, you want to have your own space. Uh, you want to have something that you can call your own. And for us, if we you know, wanted to expand our family, we knew that the first step was going to be to uh, to get our own home. Having an apartment uh, is the first time you're able to pay the cost to be the boss <laughs> of sorts. Um, just being uh, freshly married and, you know, wanting to make a home uh, for myself and my husband and you know, just having the, the world of being married and, and it was an experience, but at the same time, we knew that there was a next step to take. And so, uh, being able to know what those steps were, uh, being able to, uh, have conversations and, uh, important 
um, side conversations, whether it be with colleagues or with family members and, you know, just getting some ideas about how uh, home ownership works and the things that go into it. And so there was a lot to consider, uh, a lot to take in. And so we just wanted to make sure that we had everything that we needed in order to start that process. Awesome. So so what did it look like for you all in, in your heart, Murphy and Melissa? Why was it important for you guys to become a homeowner? Yeah, that's a good, good question. Um, man, growing up in a single mother, you know, single mo- mother's ho- household and really not knowing what generational wealth looked like, what living in a home that you can call yours looked like or even felt. Um, never thought it was even a possibility. And to now fast forward to where we are today and to just really have that foundation that we built along the years and really look toward home ownership in which we're doing now, it's it's almost a, it's a surreal moment that we're looking at. It's, it's something that makes you cry in a sense because it's, it's, it's something we never thought was even possible. So we, we were, in my opinion, of course, we're changing genera- generational curses to generational blessings and actually taking a step to build a foundation for it our generations to come, as I mentioned earlier. So we're excited. And that's the heartfelt um, reason why homeowners is so key in our um, wealth building, in our in our marriage. Yeah. To kind of echo that, I think the word ownership really has resonated with me lately because for so many years, it was like, you know, I had that poverty mentality where it was like, I can't own anything. Like, <laughs> I can't even own, you know, a car without financing it. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, that was just like, a dream to me, you know, so that word ownership and just, you know, we're about to have our first baby Mm -hmm. in a few months and to just walk into our new home with our child. And it's just going to be incredible to, you know, look back on that foundation that we've built to give our future family that life that we never had, you know, so it's just really special um, when I think about that. And congratulations, congratulations. to you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. All right. So a lot of people I know are resonating with you all's hearts, right? You start your new marriage off and, you know, you start in a lot of instances renting. And then as time gets on, you all are working on becoming husband and wife or your relationship. And then you start to have different dreams of becoming a homeowner. So take us right there to that season and that moment. And as you guys begin to dream about becoming a homeowner, how did you think in your mind that the process would go? Let's start with you, Evan. Wait a minute, real quick. I just want to make sure that we highlight this. Um, What I love about both of your stories is so unique. The Roberts family, they're currently in their home. The Stewart's family, you all are building a brand new home, right? So you all are actually sharing the process. Y'all are in the thick of it. So I love that. Yeah, I love that. For those of you who are listening or watching, some of you all can resonate with the Robert story because you're probably currently in your home. Some of you all have admirations to buy a home and some of you all are actually in the process. So I love that about their stories. And I just want to make sure I highlighted that. So how do you think it would go, Evan? You know what? I I really thought that it would be a pretty smooth process, (laughs) Uh, to be honest. You know, we... um, you know, our parents have owned their own homes. And, and it was one of those things where it wasn't that home ownership wasn't something that we had an example uh, to, to we did where we didn't have an example to follow because we, we truly did. I, I think the for me, it was just a matter of, hey, uh, let's go into to the bank and let's, you know, make sure that uh, we've done everything we need to do from, you know, from a FICO standpoint, we're in good shape. And and then everything will, will work its way out. But man, it did not happen that way. <laughs> We're going to get to that. We're going to unpack the the uh, hurdles that you had to jump over um, to get to where you guys are, are actually sitting in your home right now, because I know for sure a lot of people will be able to relate and resonate with that. What about you, Melissa, on, on you all's end when you begin to, because it's always good, you know, I think the first in a lot of instances, the first person to have those types of thoughts, the, the white picket fence and all that, a lot of times is the wife. So when you started dreaming in the direction of home ownership, did you think it would be a smooth process or what was in your in your head? Like when we begin this journey, this is how it's going to go for us. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember walking into model home several, several years ago and it like that's when the seed was planted. But I didn't realize, you know, how much financial debt that we had to kind of take care of before that. So, you know, after we 
paid off the debt, we were like, okay, that's, that's one of the things that's a desire of ours is to be homeowners. And so I thought it was just going to be this, you know, quick process. Let's go look at a model home. Let's choose one. Let's start building or, you know, find a resale home. And, you know, up until about a year ago is when we started the process really seriously because we were in a financial position that, you know, we were able to start that process. Um, but it's been challenging. I mean, challenge after challenge after challenge this last year. I mean, you would think it would, you'd pick the house and you just go with it and the builders do their thing, but you know, it's just been one hurdle after the next. I mean, we're still kind of in, in facing some of those hurdles mm -hmm. even to the very end here, but um, it's been yeah. interesting. So. so I want to ask you guys this, how did your FICO score play a role in your journey? Um, FICO scores are calculated each time you or a lender um, pulls your FICO score and there's a lot that goes into calculating that um, score for your FICO score. So I want you all to talk about that. Um, let's go with the Roberts first. Yeah, so I would say, uh, Ty, that we, we knew that you had to have a certain score. You know, that, that wasn't a question. Uh, I think the issue, though, that we didn't really understand was that uh, there, there's a lot that goes into that score. Right. So your, your debt to income ratio and, uh, you know, how much, um, you know, even your your borrowing history and, you know, how often you made payments and all of that that goes into it. So we knew you had to have a, a solid score. And our our premise was, hey, we make great income as educators. We're good. Right. And so, you know, we shouldn't we, we will be OK in terms of, you know, going in there if our scores are uh, not as, you know, we're in that range that it needs to be we'll still be okay because we have the income to back, you know, to back up anything else. And that was just not the case <laughs> uh, because we were told on, you know, multiple occasions that yes, you guys have the income, but you don't have the credit. Uh, and, and I come from a household where my parents didn't really stress, you know, using credit cards and things like that. So it wasn't that, we were were unaware of credit. It's just that at that time we had not even really established a credit footprint. We didn't have a profile really uh, because we really didn't use credit. It wasn't a part of you know our upbringing uh, for the most part. At least I know in my house I I didn't really see that, and I know that it wasn't harped on by my parents to actually use credit cards or to you know worry about your your, your FICO scores and things like that. So I know. In my household, the credit cards and things of that nature, budgeting. Uh, that was something that was key that uh, both my parents, they would sit down, you know, I would see that, you know, on a monthly basis. And so, you know, they knew their finances, they knew the, you know, the income coming in, the income going out. Um, my father always explained uh, even more in depth as I became an adult about the, um, the income and financial gain, uh, how to be able to make sure that you're using your financial in, uh, influx of money that comes into your household to be able to use it to your advantage and making sure that when you have your FICO score, that it's something that you are holding it to a higher level than most people might think, and that it's going to play a major role in the future uh, options that you have coming up. But it, you know, it's good when you have somebody telling you that information and it's another thing for you to actually follow through with it. So, <laughs> yeah. And when you were referencing score, Evan, he was referencing his credit score. What I think is so beautiful about what you guys just shared um, is that your credit score is a journey and there's always an opportunity to change your behavior over time. These are not quick fixes and things like that. Um, but you do have the ability to, and in your case, Evan said he didn't even have credit. He didn't even know how to properly use credit. He didn't see it growing up um, where Leslie, uh, your wife, she actually saw her parents um, doing it and using it um, to either their advantage or not. So I, I, I love that about your, your story. So the stewards, how did the FICO score play a part in your journey towards home ownership? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, man, you, you said something so imperative just now. It's just, it's a, it was a journey. And when I say that, we were hustling and grinding trying to get out of debt and one thing that we did not focus on was improving our credit credit score FICO score right it's we, we were so you know rigorously trying to get out of debt and then we get to the point that hey we want to own a home be own homeowners but man our 
FICO score is low in the 600s, like, wait, I don't think we can get a, a home with that kind of rate, um, you know, that specific FICO score. So we had to kind of rethink and kind of educate ourselves on how to get to that point to increase our FICO score to get to a point of being, um, you know, uh, I guess you can say of uh, someone who can be a homeowner. So we, 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 you know, you said it about the behaviors change. Our behaviors change in such a dramatic way that it actually gained more. We gained more responsibility in how to manage our money correctly, of course, but how to manage our FICO score correctly. So we utilize credit, um, credit cards and such to kind of get ourselves to the point of being um, really good at um, managing our FICO score, but then becoming a, um, um, a homeowner. But we didn't even know how that that was going to be come a possibility because we thought our credit our FICO score was so low, but luckily we um, began to utilize our FICO score and got to a point of becoming homeowners. But it's just it just amazes me how the things that we you know we we were in households when we were younger and that was never even spoken about about how to improve your FICO score, how to be good managers of your money and all this stuff. But we had to educate us, so we had to actually initiate and be intentional about how to do that. But we got to the point, say, hey, we, we know how to manage our money correctly. Our behavior has changed. We can trust ourselves to get to a point of now, you know, walking into a new home. But a new build in, in itself was, was definitely a nuance. But um, but yes, that's to answer your question. So, yeah, I think it was the FICO score is always a foreign concept to me. Like Murph said, growing up, I never really heard about it or, you know, how to pay attention to it. And honestly, even through the five years that we were paying off the debt, I didn't even know about it. I didn't even really think to look at it or pay attention to it or the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. And so like now when we work with people and we help them with their finances, we really encourage that, you know, make sure that you like check your FICO score and <laughs> keep an eye on it because once the debt is gone, like for us, it, it took kind of a dive, mm -hmm. you know? So just learning from that, looking back, it's like we probably would have paid closer attention or kind of made some adjustments mm -hmm. on our journey, you know? So um, I think it's just been really honestly recently that we've in the last couple of years that we've learned about it, the purpose of it, you know, how to manage it and have a good healthy credit score and, and why we need it, um, especially becoming homeowners. So. so I want to make mention too, when you guys hear our couples talking about their credit score, the one that we're specifically talking about is the FICO score. Not all credit scores are FICO scores. Mm -hmm. FICO scores um, is created by the Fair Isaac Corporation and it is most widely used. It is the most widely used credit score, it is. which is FICO scores 90% um, of the U.S. in the U.S. the lenders, 90% yeah. of those lenders, um, that's the score that they're pulling. Um, and so in, you all, in your particular cases, your FICO score was pulled. And the stewards mentioned managing and using credit cards. I want to talk about that because there are people that are listening um, and I, we like to give like practical steps and things that maybe you all took. How did you properly use your credit cards? Because as you all mentioned, you all were completely debt free. Um, you guys paid off all of your debt and then you were like, OK, now we want to build a home. And you realize, hey, that we need to figure out ways to um, build our credit score. And so how did you all properly use credit cards to do that? Yeah, good question. So we, um, you know, kept our budget. We still have a budget. And so basically we allocate money for, for say, for example, groceries, you know, $300 for groceries. Well, then we want to go to the store and we want to buy, you know, a big grocery haul for the week. So we would just use one of our credit cards, knowing that the money's in our account. <laughs> and then, as, you know, whenever that bill from the grocery store posted on our credit card, we would just pay that off with the cash in our checking account. So we kind of built that as a habit. You know, as soon as it posts, we try to pay it off. You know, sometimes we wait, you know, a couple of weeks or so, but we never we never let it go through the end of the cycle where we're going to get hit with interest or um, so it's just we share like a, a mutual uh, notes in our app and our phones. And so anytime we we have something, you know, pending on our credit cards, we're always like updating it so we, that we can both see it and that we're both updating it along with our budget. So that, that's been really helpful to just kind of be on the same page, you know, together as a married couple and then just keep track of, you know, a lot of times those credit card, they don't come out of your checking account right away. So that's kind of a delay too. So that's another thing that you kind of have to keep an eye on and manage um, through the process. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because she said it really good because I, I think when it comes to credit cards back in the, in the past, 
I was always say, oh, you need to carry over, you know, a balance over and everything to inc- improve your FICO score and such. But, you know, that's one one way to do it. But we choose to do it in a way that we make sure we have the cash in our accounts. You know, when we travel or whatnot, we just made a big trip a few a few months ago to actually, you know, more like six, four, five months ago to Hawaii. And we funded that within the um, credit credit card. We, we had our funds in it. Was it posted? We paid that credit card and it really boosted our FICO score to the point of, us being able to see it over, you know, now 700, almost 800 credit uh, FICO score. So it's, it's incredible to just like, change the mindset of how you look at managing your credit cards and your FICO score. So I just wanted to put that into it. She said it really perfectly. So no, that's so. dope. That's dope. I think that, man, it's so unique to hear that you all were facing things that aren't typical. Like a lot, a lot of people feel as though the only way to have obstacles with your FICO score to overcome is if you mismanage your mm-hmm. situation right mm-hmm. but in evan's case it was just i didn't have credit it wasn't that i mismanaged a bunch of credit i just didn't have a profile that was conducive for the home ownership journey with the stewards they went all in on getting out of debt. debt and because they stopped using um they, they were so they weren't acquiring new debt they were getting rid of the debt that they had it caused the fico score to not be where they needed it to be so there's so many ways to get here because it's calculated. Yeah, yeah. There's so many factors mm-hmm. that go into. So that's why I think this is this is major importance. And what I'm hearing from both sides of the equation is you got to be intentional. You have to know what's going yes. on with your FICO score. If the goal is home ownership journey, then you got to know what's going on with that FICO score of yours. So now I want to come to Evan and Leslie because I want to talk about obstacles. For some, the journey to home ownership is not smooth. There are hurdles to jump over, obstacles to get around. Did you all experience that? And if you all did, talk about the obstacles that you experienced and also what you all did to overcome the obstacles and ultimately achieve your goal of home ownership. Yeah, Tala, so and thank you for that. Uh, I definitely can tell you that being, you know, having advanced degrees. So we, you know, we both have our master's degrees from from college. And obviously, you know, you go to school and you either, you know, you get a scholarship, you get a grant or you get a what? You get a loan. (laughs) And so our the albatross around our neck was the fact that, you know, we both had basically uh, huge student loans. Uh, that were counting against, you know, and, and, and basically skewing our entire debt to income ratio. So the first hurdle, the first major hurdle was we had to find a way to reduce those student loans ASAP. And for me, it just so happened that uh, I started my teaching career on the west side of Chicago uh, at our Raby High School. And uh, teaching in a high needs area allowed me to qualify for something known as teacher loan forgiveness. Uh, And as a result of being able to qualify for that, uh, I was able to wipe out about twenty thousand dollars in student loan debt, uh, which once that happened, Talit and Ty, it it tremendously changed uh, some things for us. Uh, I think the the big thing uh, that it did was it showed me right away that, you know, when you graduate from high school, it's all about your grades. Right. How you did. (laughs) And in the, in the financial world, it's about, you know, your credit profile, you know, and what grade does your credit, your credit profile provide you. And so I think when we were able to get rid of uh, those student loans, it really opened up uh, quite a bit for us. Uh, the way that we went about doing that, uh, I learned about uh, just different things that, that we could do in terms of writing, uh, writing the credit bureaus, uh, disputing different things that were on uh, on our reports. Uh and just being able to be aware of the fact that there were ways that debt could be forgiven, which I don't think a lot of people sometimes realize when they borrow money for school, that you know there are programs out there, uh, especially if you you know teach in a high needs area and things like that, uh, that there are programs that exist that can help you to actually get rid of the debt that you may have. So that was hurdle number one uh, for us, is just figuring out a way to get from underneath the student loan debt. And then afterwards, I mean, it took us almost two years to be able to uh, come to a place where we knew we had a strong credit profile. So eliminating the debt, writing the numerous letters to uh, the credit bureaus, uh, being able to 
um, look at exactly what's going on. How are the changes happening within our uh, FICO scores? So knowing, just having that, that information of knowing where you are, uh, what is actually there and being able to keep a constant eye on that is so key. Um, being able to talk together. I know Melissa and Murphy talked about just being able to uh, be in tune with what is actually happening with your finances. It's so important to be able to be on the same page. Um, of course, like I said, it's easier said than done. Sometimes, you know, you might not want to say that, you know, you have this coming in or that getting ready to post to the account and things of that nature. But at the same time, you know that eventually if you are both wanting the same, some of the same goals and you're trying to reach this end goal, then in, in the end, it's, it's just best to have that, that open communication and knowing what's there. I love what you said, Leslie. It's so important that you guys get involved, have the open conversations, um, open communication lines. Don't just put your head in the sand, you all. Um, actively monitor the credit score that matters, which is your FICO score. Um, if you hit some challenges, maybe the pandemic has impacted you, contact your lenders. Um, if you think that you're going to miss a payment, contact your lenders. Let them know what's going on. Have mm -hmm. the open conversations um, because you definitely want to make sure that you stay on top of or at least stay informed when it comes to your FICO score. Let's help them be informed right now. Let's sure. talk about what goes into your FICO score. Yep. 35% of it is about your payment history. history. So are you paying stuff on time or are you paying things like that's 35% of your score? And it's broken down into five categories. So 35% of that. Yep. And so category number two makes up 30% of your score. And that's the amount owed. You heard uh, everybody talking about debt to income ratio and yeah. things like that. They're going to look at how much debt you currently have, mm -hmm. and that's going to factor into your FICO score as well. So the third category, it makes up 15% of your FICO score, and that mm -hmm. is the length of your credit history, meaning how long have you had the credit that you currently have? And then credit number four makes up 10%, and that's new credit. They're looking at how many new credit accounts is in your uh, profile, and that's going to be a factor. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is another 10% category. Number five is the mix of credit. So revolving credit, different types, different types of credit. Yeah. They want to see a mixture of credit types as well. So those are the five categories, all that come together to make up your FICO score. That's right. And ask your lenders, um, if you all are in the process right now of in the home ownership journey, um, just like the, the stewards are, ask your lender, what credit score are you pulling? If they don't say FICO score, then it's probably something else. You want to make sure that you find out, is it the FICO score? Um, and if so, definitely this particular episode will be able to give you information on your FICO score. Yeah. Were, there, were there any other surprises along the way, um, Roberts, when it came to purchasing your home uh, that maybe you guys were not aware of? Anything else that caught you know, caught you by surprise. Yeah, definitely. I would say, uh, Ty, that one major uh, surprise was the fact that, you know, you, collectively, um, we have, you have a credit profile as a couple, right? So you have, you know, you have, you know, the, uh, the two of you together and they're looking at, you know, everything collectively. And so in the beginning, we were under the impression that both people had to be on the mortgage in order for you to qualify. Uh, we didn't we didn't really you know, realize that, hey, one person could actually apply and then it still you know will work out the way it needs to work out. And so because my uh, wife had a lot more student loan uh, debt than I did, uh, it was easier for us to move in a faster manner to get to uh, qualifying for the home than it would have been if we tried to you know do it both together on the application and then at the same time still trying to pay down her student loan and getting all the way there uh, collectively. So that was one thing that we we didn't realize. And I think it, um, you know, in the end, at the end of the day, it, it helped us out tremendously to to understand that. And just to go back a little bit, uh, one of the the things that it's kind of a catch 22, I guess, is when you're when you don't have a credit profile, it's not really strong. Uh, and then you need to, you know, show that you are able to be responsible with credit. So, you you know, you can get a credit card, but your credit score is not quite there yet <laughs> to get a credit. It's like you're in this catch 22. and You're mad as heck. Like, what am I? Oh, my goodness. It's like you're a fish caught in a net. 
And so we were kind of in that for a little bit of time too. Like, wait a minute. We, so we got to get a credit card, but we, the credit score isn't where it needs to be. So, uh, that part of it was a little challenging, but, I, but needless to say, God made a way, you know, and I, and, and we were really happy with, uh, being able to, to understand that at the end of the day, uh, there are things that you can do to take time. Uh, it, again, like, uh, my wife mentioned, it took us two years to get everything right. Uh, and so, you know, and, and, and things always happen in God's time. So it, it was exciting for us to be able to, to go that path and, to really figure out that, hey, there is a this is a game and you got to have to figure out how to play it the right way. And if you're going to borrow money, then you have to have a strong FICO score. You know, if you're going to borrow money and not pay a lot in interest, you got to have a strong FICO score. Uh, and so we just we had to understand the rules of the game and then uh, go by go go and do it. Yeah, Evan, what you're saying, um, I love that. And I want to make sure that our listeners understand when it comes to a FICO score, generally the scores range between 300 to 850. And usually the higher the score, the less risk you are to lenders. So therefore, that usually equates to lower interest rates. Now, FICO score is not calculated at all by your race, your gender, your religion, um, your sex, um, and some other factors. They're strictly looking at those five categories um, that we broke down to you guys in um, the beginning of this episode. So keep that in mind. What I love about the Robert story is they said it took them two years. It Patience. was a journey. Patience. Patience. Um, they didn't get, yeah, maybe they got discouraged along the way, but they didn't get discouraged to the point where they gave up. Mm -hmm. um, and they kept putting in the work, learning, um, educating themselves around um, their credit score and different things when it comes to owning a home. So I love that their journey, it was patience. Yeah. Uh, what's what's Im imp impactful to me for people to know is that I think a lot of times um, when things don't go your way, so when you launched into this journey to become a homeowner and it didn't pan out the way that you mm -hmm. thought it would, it could be something that feels like such a defeat. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. Less the air out of your, your balloon. You can feel like less than. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys persevered and endured. You all are all degreed. You all are all professionals. And yet there was this thing. Like no matter the college, no matter the work you put in on your occupation, you're getting promotions, yeah. you're, you're being told you're the man, you're the woman at work and you're excellent. And then you go and, and then you go sit in front of this, this, this mortgage office and be like, nope, X, Y, and Z needs to happen first. That could really do something to people internally. So we would love for you all to encourage the listener right now, because you all face that. But y'all didn't let that stop you. You all endured that and you all are achieving the goal regardless. So I would love to hear from Murphy and then Melissa and then Evan and then Leslie. What words of encouragement would you have to a person that is listening right now that is considering home ownership and they're concerned? Are they ready or they're in it? And they're trying to get ready or they haven't experienced the smooth sailing that they thought they would in this journey to home ownership. Yeah. I would say first and foremost, truly believe in yourself that it can be done. Um, you know, you are where you are for a reason, of course, but that, that's not the end of your journey at all. And educate yourself. Maybe you are so, the information online is so in, uh, accessible right now, as we all, all, we, we all know. Um, FICO score, you know, it's, it has an algorithm that favors us, you know, we, but we have to educate ourselves you know, on the five categories in which tie into a lot. Just um, expounding on, just educate yourself and listen, and um, and and really gain that hope because we were all there at one time or another, but we decided to do something about it. We decided not to just get discouraged and let that debilitate us. We actually kept pursuing and progressing toward our journey because we started to listen more, educate, being more intentional, and pursuing what we truly believe that God had purpose for us in building and in, in home ownership. So that's my, my advice. Yeah. I would just say, you know, it's normal. The process is going to be challenging. You're not alone in that. And, you know, even just for us, like we've lived in an apartment for 12, 12 years, next year is 12 years of marriage for 12 years, you know? And so it's like, there's no specific time frame of, Oh, you got to get married and have a baby and get a house and do this and do that. And then, you know, it's like, it's all in God's timing, you know, it's like, and so I think it's don't beat yourself up. Everyone's, everyone's journey is going to look different and it's going to be a process and, you know, life just isn't easy. It's always a journey. So, um, 
but just know that it's normal and it's it's going to take some grit and grind and not not having a desire to give up. So um, that's good. Yeah. I would definitely say be intentional about what you're doing. Uh, make sure that if you're serious about the process to stay with it, stick to it. Uh, surround yourself with uh, resources and with other people who are uh, where you would like to be um, in the process of um, owning a home. Uh, have al- They're already homeowners and just being able to uh, gain knowledge from them. And as uh, Melissa and Murphy said, you know, making sure that you are uh, taking advantage of the information that is out there. There is such a uh, wide variety of uh, useful resources and information that is out there uh, to be, you know, taken and used uh, for the greater good. And so you just want to make sure, you know, that you are using that information, knowing what your FICO score is, being able to know about your finances and uh, just being transparent. You know, I know that that is easier said than done, as I said before, but at the same time, it, it's better that way because in the end, you will be able to see how all of that uh, plays into you being successful in the long run. Yeah. And just to echo uh, what my wife is saying, uh, I think it's really important to set goals around this, uh, this uh, your financial profile, set goals around where you want to be. You know, I think the challenge is not that we can't achieve our goals, is that oftentimes we don't know to set goals on specific things. So uh, I, I set a personal goal. I wanted my credit score to uh, my, my FICO. So I wanted to be way high, like 750 and above. Uh, and I knew that that would take some excellence in behavior uh, to be able to attain uh, that type of number, you know, and some consistency. Uh, and I'm big on I'm a coach. So tracking what we're doing. Right. Uh, and using, you know, Google spreadsheets and, you know, having the the budget and knowing where you are and just keeping track, you know, of where your money is going and your spending habits, too. I think one of the big revelations for us and one of the things to encourage the, the listeners is that w- once you track where your spending is going, now you can make adjustments from month to month. You can see, OK, you know, last month we spent, you know, X, Y, Z amount on food out. Oh, man, that's way too much. We got to we got to dial it back if we're going to hit this goal. But unless you know what your numbers are, it's hard to set goals and priorities around what you really want to accomplish because you're unaware of, you know, where the money is actually going uh, and how it could better work in your favor if you were aware of that. So I would just say set goals, believe that this is something that you can attain uh, and just know, too, that in the beginning, uh, everything is hard before it's easy. All right. Everything is hard before it becomes simple. And so give yourself the benefit of the doubt. And just trust and believe that if somebody else has been able to accomplish it, you definitely can do it as well. Come on. Yeah, Come y'all. on. Preaching Everybody up in here. Everybody giving good, 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 good recommendations. <laughs> there's, there's, there's good news, guys, because, news. again, we are always on a mission to help you all That's improve right. your situation and provide you all with resources to help you do that. And FICO has the same level of commitment. They are committed to providing consumers with education yes. and resources and to, to better help understand. them yep. better understand their FICO scores. You can go to www.scoreabetterfuture.com where they have free education, yes. free tools to help you guys understand what you need to do to put yourself in a position of strength when it comes to your FICO scores. That's right. You'll have the opportunity to learn firsthand from their credit experts. Um, you can also have free one-on-one um, credit coaching from nonprofit financial counselors. Um, and they'll help you, as Evan mentioned, you need to set goals. They'll help you, um, come up with a landscape when it comes to your financial health, as well as setting your financial goals. So make sure you go to www.scorebetterfuture.com. We'll make sure that the links will be in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, check the links in the description box. We will have that there for you. It's totally free. You guys get the education, inform yourselves. Both couples, both of them say it, educate yourself. Mm-hmm. Both of them say it, um, you know, learn what you're doing. Surround yourself with the information. The information is out there and FICO is willing to help you. Again, no, no need to no need to continue to be ignorant when help right. is available. Again, go to www.scorebetterfuture.com. So we want to give everybody an opportunity to learn more about what These you all couples, have yes. going on and how they can stay in touch with you. So Melissa and Murphy, 
uh, tell everybody a little bit about what you guys have going on, how they can stay in touch with you. And Evan and Leslie, please do the same after that. Yeah, man, we are disruptors of the you know, generational curses, man. I can tell you that right now. We actually are helping people one-on-one and group settings too to financially develop their, their budget and get to where they want to be wealth-wise, um, you know, improving their FICO score, of course. That's huge in our program. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can find us at um, fit and www.fitandfunds.com. That's F-I-T-N as in Nancy, F-U-N-D-S. Um, but everything's there. And also you can, that same F-I-T-N-F-U-D-S is also our handle on Instagram and Facebook and also you too. So I'm looking forward to I'm um, talking with you guys and thank you again so much time to lot. Yes, thank you both. Yeah, and for us, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we're children's picture book authors. Our whole platform is on creating diverse books uh, that celebrate diverse children. Uh, 20 books so far in the collection. EJRbooks.com is the uh, website. And uh, definitely would love you to check us out because we're educators. And I think it's super important to uh, have our children turn on to reading at an early age. Uh, we've been reading to our little boy <laughs> since he came out the womb, probably before. <laughs> right, probably talking to the um, stomach, right? Yeah. It's just, uh, it, it's a remarkable thing. You know, we're both educators and I know uh, just how important it is that you have parents who are promoting, you know, the importance of literacy, who are building that library out, who are you know, getting those books autographed and positive message about you know you and what you can become inside so uh that's us again ejrbooks.com uh the kahari series you can check us out uh we're all we're on all social media platforms as well awesome man we can't say thank y'all enough for being willing to be vulnerable and transparent and share the ups and downs that you all had to face in order to get to the process of home ownership. And I know yeah. that people listening are going to be able to glean wisdom from it for their journey as well. well there you have it. Another fantastic episode in the books. Did y'all dig oh it? Oh my Did gosh. y'all learn from it? Two great couples sharing real life stories. I hope this helps you guys. I hope you all were encouraged and uplifted um, when it comes to your home journey process and your credit score. Remember, FICO score is giving away free educational resources um, and equipping you with tools. You can have free one-on-one uh, financial coaching with a nonprofit financial coach. Go to scoreabetterfuture.com. Again, we'll have the links in the show notes, the links in the description box below as well, too. All right, guys, we hope that you guys got what you needed. We know that you did. Uh, let us know in the comments below your feedback on what you learned and what you're going to implement, because we want to make sure that you guys are proceeding forward, that you're not just hearing, right. but you're doing. That's important to us. That's all we got for this time, guys. It's been great. Until next time. Peace. Bye, y'all.